Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Homer Dimark. This edition stops stories. Government adjusts the curfew hours as part of COVID-19 prevention measures. The Goodwill Ambassador Program draws the talent of famed British artist Stephen Wiltshire. And Nemo briefs the Cabinet of Ministers on St. Lucia's readiness to assist St. Vincent and the Grenadines. After months of spiraling COVID-19 cases in St. Lucia, the national effort to reducing the numbers is paying dividends. At March 30, 2021, the Ministry of Health reported 118 active COVID-19 cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma george has indicated that the aim is to reduce the number of active cases to 50 or below. Given the spike in cases following the holiday season, the authorities have taken the decision to restrict the movement of people during the upcoming Easter weekend. The government has announced adjustments to the curfew hours. Nicole MacDonald is the senior communications officer in the office of the Prime Minister. On Thursday, the curfew will begin at 7 p.m. Also on Friday, 2nd April, the curfew will begin at 7 p.m. On Saturday, 3rd April, the curfew will be from 6 p.m. And on Sunday, the 4th of April, and on Monday the 5th of April, the curfew will begin at 3 p.m. On all of those days, the curfew will end at 4 a.m. The government of St. Lucia continues to thank St. Lucians for their cooperation as we seek to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. It's really about trying to manage the level of activity we have had on the island. On several weekends over and over, we've all seen the evidence and several videos of mass crowd events of a lot of congregation where people are not observing the protocols. Ms. McDonald is appealing to all nationals to cooperate as the government seeks to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. She's encouraging everyone to continue practicing the infection and prevention control measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19. It's only when we're able to really bring down those numbers that we can get to a point where we can relax a little bit and to socialize a little bit, bit more with our family and friends. So it's very important that we take a decision as adults, as responsible citizens to do what we need to do in order to bring those numbers down so we can get back to a sense of normalcy once again. The curfew will revert to 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. on Tuesday, 6 April 2021. The British High Commission has donated a set of PPE to Customs and Excise Department and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, RSLPF. The equipment was provided by the UK Border Force and demonstrates the continued close collaboration between the UK and St. Lucia governments. Acting Deputy Controller of Customs, Ava de Turville, and Inspector Valentine Caesar were on hand to receive the donation from resident British Commissioner Steve McCready. Mrs. de Turville expressed the Customs Department's heartfelt gratitude for the UK's donation and highlighted that the equipment has ensured that officers are better protected while they deliver border protection services to the island. Inspector Caesar said that this contribution by the UK Border Force signifies the partnership between St. Lucia and the UK and was pleased that the relationship continues to be a strong one. The handover took place on Thursday, March 25th at the High Commission's office in Castries. Famed British-born artist of St. Lucian parentage, Stephen Wiltshire has made a donation of his art to the government of St. Lucia. Wiltshire garnered international recognition for his ability to draw detailed panoramas, including cities, skylines and urban scenes from memory. His latest work, however, is in part a homage to the island of his mother's birth, St. Lucia. In a brief ceremony to hand over to Lad Scale and a small print sketch, his sister and the manager, Annette Wiltshire, shared how her autistic brother's remarkable talent was discovered, his successes, inspiration, and the significance of the donation to them. We are humbled to be here because we love the island, we love the people, we love the food, we love the culture. And it was about time that as a, a Stephen, as an international artist, that he came to represent um, 
our mother's island, the people's island, Helen of the West. And we are very, very grateful to be here. And um, we would just like to say that uh, we hope that Stephen's drawing will help to motivate and hope to inspire other budding artists because there is so many uh, talent out there that has the opportunity to show um, and express themselves in creative arts. I am very happy to hand over my artwork. I hope it will inspire and motivate all. I am proud to be part of it. My mother's home is my home too. Do the best you can and never stop. Stephen Wiltshire's engagement with the government of St. Lucia was achieved through Goodwill Ambassador, His Excellency Shalim Yudovic. Aret and I uh, have fostered a beautiful friendship um, uh, in, in the years preceding my official introduction to Stephen, which was quite recently. It was um, during the COVID period. And he's a beautiful human being, a beautiful soul. And today, you know, we're going to receive three very valuable sketches from Stephen Wilshire. Um, if, you don't, if you have never heard the name, go on Google, Google Stephen, find out who he, who he is, Stephen Wilshire. He's an international artist. He sketches cityscapes around the world. He has sketched every cityscape from Australia to Manhattan, to Paris, to London, every single cityscape in the world, Stephen has been commissioned by the municipalities of his various cities to sketch them and virtually immortalize these cityscapes through his art. Minister with Responsibility for Culture and the Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose commended Yudovic on leveraging his network to meet the mandate of the Goodwill Ambassadors Program. When he said to me that he had Stefan Hare, you know, world-renowned artist, um, you know, how did you get this guy? You know, but that's his network. And he was able to leverage that network to have you here today, you know, to showcase what we can do, you know, as people of this country, you know, St. Lucians. And not just St. Lucians, but special St. Lucians. In his case, he's autistic, but he's been able to demonstrate the capacity and the ability to achieve world fame you know, because of the work that he can do. The government of St. Lucia continues to monitor events in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and prepare for the possible hosting of evacuees if the La Sufia volcano were to erupt. More in this report. The OECS Replast project is... The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, on Monday briefed the Cabinet of Ministers on the La Soufre volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as St. Lucia stands ready to assist our sister island. Monitoring scientists from the UE Seismic Research Center have recently noted a change in seismic activity associated with the ongoing eruption of the La Soufre volcano. Reports are that the volcanic tectonic earthquakes continue with the numbers of events fluctuating. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, is closely monitoring the ongoing situation. Due to our close proximity, San Lucia is preparing for various scenarios. During the Situation Overview to Cabinet, Director of NEMO, Ms. Doreen Gustav, spoke about San Lucia's preparations, including meetings of the various disaster district committees. In that presentation, we were able to inform them of the capacity of NEMO to deal with evacuees from one point to the next, from the danger zone to the safe zone, and the possible spill off where we will need to accept or receive evacuees locally in St. Lucia. I would like to inform that an evacuation order has not been issued by St. Vincent. And so we are not saying that it is something that will happen. We're saying that we have to prepare in the event that it happens. We're asking St. Lucians to remain calm 
it is no need there is no need to panic um, it is Nemo now working to put all of our various plans in place Nemo is set to begin an aggressive public education and sensitization campaign within local communities. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney called on citizens to remain vigilant and reiterated that St. Lucia stands ready to assist and will continue to monitor the progress of this volcanic event. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Nicole MacDonald. The OECS Replast project is receiving tremendous support from the corporate community. Unite Caribbean Limited says it is pleased to mark a major milestone with the activation on Saturday, March 20th of the rewards component of the Replast OECS pilot plastic recycling project. This is also significant for the IT company Covered Solutions, which developed and manages the online portal, which is the first of its kind in St. Lucia. Think of the digital platform as both an administrative tool um, as well as a marketplace. And from the marketplace point of view, it gives the, 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 the location or the place where the members can go and purchase, redeem their points, as well as the participating partners will be able to replenish and put their, their products for sale or for exchange in that platform in a very interactive way, similar to how we'd probably go online and, and shop Amazon on Amazon platform or the other online mediums you go to to extract your to buy your, your, your goods. And from the administrative point of view, the Replus organization has the empirical data or the transact can be can track all data from what the members are doing, what the partners are doing, and the plastics that they're receiving in various classifications and categories. Replus project director Shanta King says the successful activation of the redemption process is proving the level of design innovation of the digital platform, which serves as the engine room for the pilot project. The digital platform, this is quite important for us as a pilot project as it is an opportunity for us to collate the necessary data required um, to develop expansion aspects of the project as well as replication activities um, for other islands. So we are quite pleased that we have actually launched this um, digital platform live and persons have actually started the redemption process. Um, also a feature of that process is that of the patrons being able to access their information online as well as the various partners and administrators being able to access that data. So we are quite pleased with this important milestone of the project. With the activation of the Replast Rewards, the very first redemption registered on the system took the form of a $50 voucher and a $50 hamper from Massey Stores. Kitel Raphael Dubois, Marketing and Corporate Communications Officer, said the Replast partnership with Massey Stores is in keeping with its sustainable journey and focus on plastic waste reduction and recycling. As we all know, Massey Stores has begun a journey of reducing plastic waste. And so Massey Stores has joined with Replast OECS's rewards program in providing vouchers, loyalty points, and hampers that customers could choose from when you put together your points at the collection point. The recipient of the first set of rewards is a Replast volunteer, Angelica Surville, who is attached to the Grosley Community Collection Operation. Replast volunteers also receive reward points to show appreciation for their time. Other companies currently contributing to the Replast Rewards program are Heineken St. Lucia, Domino's Pizza, Zippy Freed, Belly Belly, Raw, Natmed Limited, People's Discount Drugs, Blue Waters, with a number of other brands also indicating their intention to participate. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dumar. As the month-long celebration of the International Women's Day this March comes to an end, concern is being expressed about gender parity, not just in Karakum, but the world. More from Toussaintkin English Francis. While women are playing an essential role in Caricom's development, it's a travesty that 25 years after the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, no country has achieved gender parity. Guyana's Minister of Human Services and Social Security, Dr. Vindiar Prasad, says. 
She made the observation on the 16th of March during the 65th session of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, where she delivered an address on behalf of CARICOM. It is a travesty that 25 years after Beijing, no country has achieved gender parity. This year's theme of women's full and effective participation and decision-making in public life, as well as the elimination of violence, is timely. Both elements are critical to achieving gender equality and the sustainable development goals. Women are playing an essential role in the socio-economic and political development of the CARICOM region and can be found in leadership positions in every sphere of influence, including politics, public services, business, and in civil society. There is, however, still much work to be done. Dr. Passat called for an enabling environment for women to achieve full and effective participation and decision-making in public life with men as equal partners. She emphasized the importance of the family, the need for shared responsibility, and a home environment that gives equal opportunities to boys and girls, and that is free from violence. Child care, education, health care, and robust social protection services are essential parts of this equation, she pointed out. She told the session that sexual and gender-based violence, as well as domestic violence against women and girls, continue to be a major challenge for CARICOM member states. The Commission on the Status of Women is the principal global intergovernmental body that is exclusively dedicated to promoting gender equality and the empowerment of women. It was established in June 1946. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson, with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the Antian Nouvelle Aquiol. Monsieur Madame Department, Kenny West Cosability, pour information en gouvernement cette ici. Ça c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale pays à Antian, Capozato Nouvelle Aquiol. Présentateur Primus Hutchinson. Yo conseil de santé qui a adressé et conseil principalement situation des abusements drogue et alcool à cette ici café public là savent que les yo ka boire alcool et ben ka servir drogue à espoir qui yo ka aider ou battre maladie corona ça pas la vérité en pièce façon coordinateur pour substance abuse council secretariat ça c'est non conseil ça là qui me mentionné à tout moment qui passé Madame Charmin Hippolyte, c'est Madame Charmin Hippolyte Emmanuel, fait comprendre qui en pile moun ka suiv ka chil sa la, si yo pren an shot wong, et ben servi drog, sa ka y servi kon yon ba wad pou maladi COVID. Mais Madame Hippolyte, ka fè yo sav ki, y pli dangere si yo pren chimè sa la. Nous ne pouvons pas juste garder un seul mot pour une substance que nous pouvons prier, mais nous voulons garder toutes les autres drogues. Bagay, le nou di drug substance, nou ka gade bagay kote moun ka yi um, adikte pou li. Mm -hmm. So nou ka gade bagay kon marijuana, epi crack, cocaine, nicotine, um, an tabak, cigarette, bagay kon sa. Mm -hmm. Me avan COVID la vini, nou te toujou ka, ka um, ekouaje moun pou gade mod ou ka servi bagay sa la, e pa servi um, nepam, nepot manye bagay kon sa. Me Kon nou ka eksperyanse pandemik sa la, i ka fe bagay la pli sewye, pli difisil pou manaje, paske le nou sevi drugs, le nou abize substances epi drugs, i ka fe COVID la pli wed asou nou. Efe kon nou te di denye kou a nou jwen, le ou sevi marijuana epi wome bagay kon sa, i pa ka fe ou, i pa ka yon pecho ou jwen malad la. In fact, it can be more difficult to manage the body because it can destroy our 
immune system là. Madame Hippo vous expliquer qui Léon qui a servi drogue, ça a fait mauvais bataille et puis le système là qui a protégé Coryon, ça c'est Coryon monde contre maladie. Tout, tout le monde a qualité maladie. Alors, l'alcool et la drogue qui a détruit l'habilité du système là pour protéger le corps. Là où il y a servi de drogue et l'alcool pour que vous puissiez protéger le corps contre le corona. Donc, so, nous voulons um, dire à mon corps que là où il y a une cause, quand il y a une cause, il y a une cause pour le Covid, il y a une cause pour le Covid. Ce qui est la cause, parce que changer. Um, nous ne voulons pas que ces choses là les autres ni sans information d'un docteur avec les gens qui connaissent avant ce sujet. So, nous voulons que les gens prennent en précaution. Faites attention, ça ne va pas attendre, ça ne va pas répéter et ça ne va pas être pratique aussi. Institution santé qui est située au bordage Gonchimé Millennium, j'ai commencé la deuxième phase d'activité pour établir l'opération de ménagement et de en plein. Ça a fait et puis participation tout employé et puis représentatif syndicat et bien union. Il y en a c'est plus important en ces activités là, c'est pour bâtir un environnement de travail côté ça a fait et puis un pile pèse à son opération qui est effective en degré pour procurer service santé international. Depuis la troisième semaine en mois de mars, travailler à l'hôpital Owen King, centre national pour traitement santé des maladies. C'est vrai, ça c'est National Mental Wellness Center, et centre pour traitement, situation de abaissement, drogue et alcool. Ça c'est Turning Point Rehabilitation Center. Tu commencé à recevoir diverses options qui ont choisi comme ces grecs institutions à commencer activité pour faciliter le euh, mouvement de travail et services euh, publics pour point responsabilité, management. Institution, c'était ça là, à danser plus haut. Um, position. Et ça a commencé le 1er mois d'avril 2021. Par conséquence, tout travail à l'institution Sala, qui a trouvé l'échelle libre là, pour sa décider option qui est plus meilleure pour vous, pour entrer en bas management nouveau Sala. En bas initiative nouveau Sala, le, le même management institution Sala, 9 millions de Sala, a établi toute facilité pour aider ces travailleurs Sala au point à bas système 9 Sala. En bas initiative, c'est travailler à trouver l'occasion pour être et avec l'autre façon pour développer personnellement. Là aussi, il y a une division spéciale pour assister à être c'est travailler ça là. C'est le nom de Greg Greg, aménagement institutionnel, qui est responsable pour garder un bon développement des ressources de travail. C'est Mme Charmaine Anthony. Là, j'ai tout arrangement en place pour que les travailleurs fait pour le développement. Yo. Ça, c'est personnellement. Et ça veut dire que chaque travail qui a pour l'avantage du développement en profession, de un temps, de employé et puis l'institution santé, Millennium Heights. Principal officier NOS pour l'hôpital d'Henry, Yolanda Alcindor, très satisfait et puis dégoué assistance à l'hôpital Salak a offert pour le monde qui a souffert et puis Corona. L'hôpital d'Henry, c'est une institution de santé qui est responsable pour assister les gens qui ont trouvé maladie corona et aussi pour tester les gens pour la pandémie. Il y a une discussion à ce entier, nos alcédons qui ont été pour faire un pile travail pour établir l'hôpital là à dégoué opération. Selon nos alcédons, ce n'est pas une expérience qui est facile, mais elle est ici. Parce que nous n'avons jamais de bout sur les autres travail là et puis c'est les autres cliniques là c'est les autres services là nous qu'a offert pour public là tous ces services là continuer et nous tenir pour mettre um, à sous ouais um, clinique respiration à uh, l'hôpital de nuit et puis um, nous tenir même ce travail là mais merci pour um, Cuba nous tenir um, nos et puis docteur Cuba qui va de nous aussi et qui va nous chaque assistance si tout en clinique là um, pour tester les gens qui ont um, venu tester pour COVID. Ça, c'est le principal, principal officier de à l'hôpital d'Henry, Mme Abenos Yolanda Alcindo. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là, monsieur, madame, je vous remercie autant pour garder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore citer quand c'est la vie. Je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle à quoi vous avez Je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle. Merci, Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. 
You could also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia's Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Humadi Mark.